My name is Jürgen Holland, and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can create ice by using Cinema 4D with Arnold Render, Bitmap 2 Material and Photoshop. So I want to start by using this stone texture as the base for the ice. So first off we need to make this tileable and um, uh, I need to turn this into a square first. So first off go in to the canvas size, can copy and paste the height and then we have a square. And then we can probably try to find an area that is more similar, maybe the darker one, that will give more contrast, more spikes and then bumps. But then I need to copy that one and um, the copy is then perfectly square. So I need to find the size. The size of the image is now 3456. I have to divide that in two and go to the offset and put in 1728. And then I need to fix the image. So I always try this first. I just make another copy and add an offset again. And then I mask out the area that I don't need. And to switch the different colors from uh, white to um, black and back again, I am um, using the Shift X button. Then I try to make the, this texture more or less seamless. Since uh, this has a lot of details, it's really easy to do this. It's much harder when uh, the texture is um, more precise, like a fabric or something like that, that has really clear lines. So. This is more or less good enough for, for our case, for making a stone texture. So now I just save this one and go into bitmap to material. In bitmap to material, I add the stone texture to the main input. You can see that uh, on this side, you can see that uh, since I made the texture seamless, this has no harsh edge. And then I go into the relief. The normal intensity is often too high. You can see the, the normal here. So um, I guess this is the base. And if I decrease that one, yeah, we have texture, but not too much. Then go into the diffuse, decrease the AO radius to remove some strange uh, points. Yeah, it seems to have turned off the intensity, normal intensity. So yeah, okay. And uh, then uh, the stone itself looks uh, good. Go into roughness, we can look at the how the shininess is. Uh, working and maybe make it a little bit more shiny. We want to make this into ice, you know. And um, but this roughness, well, you, you if you want to make a stone texture, you can um, just keep this a little bit drier. Also, stones has some um, metalness to it. Could have some uh, spikes. So, um, I can take the color picker and maybe the white ones can be a little bit more strong. So if I go into the metal here, I can um, add the range. This gives me some spots, a little bit softer maybe. Not too much because uh, 
it shouldn't look like metal like now it's way too much so a little bit of course everything uh, you make in uh, bitmap to material you can always control in uh, on the render later on and then I think we are ready to use this as an ice base but we need to change the output size to 2048 this is a crappy computer so I can't use the 4096 in size and then I do the export I need the base color, roughness, metallic, diffuse, no. Uh, speckler, no. Glossiness, no. Normal, yes. Height, yes. Displacement, yeah, maybe. I just keep it in. And then ambient occlusion, we don't need that. Ambient occlusion isn't really making it real. Curvature can be fine. And detail, normal, is not interesting. And then I save this. Yeah, I just call it stone for tutorial and then I hit export I first need to create a material I need I uh, really like the Arnold um, L surface by Anders Langland and go into the open editor for creating ice I don't need diffuse the diffuse layer so I decrease that to zero and then uh, for specular I need to change the IOR to 1.33 that's the IOR for water I can decrease the roughness for now and to create a translucent material or something that you can look through with a high refraction I add, I have to go into transmission and increase the strength. And since this is linked to the specular one, this IR is really at 1.3. So then I can add the textures. I don't know which one I want to use right now. But for, I but I know I want to use the normal. So I can add the normal displacement. Displacement in Arnold Render is really fast and doesn't increase the render times that much. I just add it to displacement and add the normal displacement to Arnold. Uh, if I want to have this material point in and out from the form or the mesh, I can add the scalar, scalar zero value to 1.5 and um, uh, just to take a look at it I can add a sphere instead of the share and I can add it to the share later on and uh, yeah and on the sphere I add the L AL surface material I can of course change the name to something more useful like ice and then let's look at the IPR if I hold shift and drag I can select the area I want to see uh, yeah, now it's uh, a little bit bumpy. I have to add the Arnold parameters tag and go into the displacement and change the height to one. Then add the out bump. And I think if I scale this into 100%, I think I need to add some subdivisions. And I use the cat clark. And increase the iterations to two that could be more or less uh, enough mm, if you want to see if this is enough you can hit the uh, shader mode and debug and look at the wireframe 
and if I add iterations, you can see that it changes changing the subdivision from on the object. And then I can go into the main and also for every translucent material like windows and stuff like that, I need to tick off the opaque button. Yeah, if I don't know why this is on in the first place, but if if it was up to me, it should be off in uh, from the get go. Now you can see that it has added a more correct refraction on the object itself. Then I need to. That was more or less a bumpy glass material. Uh, ice has a lot of weird small details. That's why it's good to have something like stone texture to uh, bumps and dynamics. And let's see, we can probably... Let's take a look at the... We can use the height to uh, turn the diffuse on and off. I can uh, connect it to the diffuse strength. This will um, include this color into the mix. So if I change the color, you can see that how it looks. Dirty ice <laughs> can't be 100% um, uh, translucent, and that's why I'm adding some of the, some diffuse. In the height, I also want to make the um, uh, the uh, on and off a little bit stronger. So I have to, um, and I want to control the contrast. And uh, I often uh, control the contrast with uh, the float ramp float. And let's look uh, if uh, I want some part translucent and some part really. Uh, clearly um, diffused and then maybe I can use the base uh, color here to uh, add some more interest yeah it looks like it could be a, a good way to go um, if I increase the roughness this would look a little bit harder. You can also add uh, subsurface scattering if you want to. Uh, it will make it maybe a little bit more believable, but uh, of course the, the subsurface scattering uh, adds a really large render hit. So yeah, I don't want to use that. And then we can uh, add more interest into the roughness of the specular I add it to the specular one and also the transmission let's take a look at the curvature uh, that doesn't look interesting so uh, just to delete that we have have added the outer bump and this doesn't seem like that it's too much information in the bump so I don't we don't need that one and also we use the normal map instead of the um, displacement so I don't want to use that either the metallic that has uh, some interesting details so where can we put the metallic that could uh, probably add uh, interest in the specular strength and um, if I use the UV transform I can add that to the transmission also and then rotate it so it's not pointing in the same direction you can see that by uh, changing the rotation here we can have uh, 
make the texture more flexible. Yeah, now it's uh, that was too much uh, changes in the transmission. And then I can use another ramp, but maybe a ramp RGB. And we need more white. Yeah, now I'm just trying to wing it. Yeah, it doesn't seem to look right, but let's take a look in the IPR. Yeah, that's a little bit too much black into the mix. Let's see in the render uh, what my ray depth is on. Yeah, uh, we don't have SSS. So this is the black part is in the material. So let's turn something off. Let's try to turn off the strength. Yeah. Okay. It seems to be ready to be used on the object, the share. Let's just delete every tag and add it to the mix and also add since uh, I also need an Arnold parameters for the whole object so it doesn't uh, look really strange but of course I can show you how it looks without it and uh, zoom out and turn off the this selection, yeah, that looks uh, really bad. And that, that's, of course, uh, the on the parameters uh, don't controlling the height of the displacement. So I'm going to turn that down to one and add the auto bump. Uh, the share has so much. Uh, subdivisions already so I don't need any more and of course turn off the opaque button yeah and that's how you can create ice material with uh, all the render cinema 4d bitmap 2 material and the Photoshop and of course, um, if you like my stuff, uh, share and enjoy and uh, subscribe, you know the drill. Have a good one. Bye bye.